Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. And my favorite way to do that, personally, is to spend time in the Word of God, in the Bible, and in prayer. And so that's what I invite you to do here on First Five. Every day, we spend a little bit of time reading through the Word of God, and at the end, we spend some time praying for one another. And so if you've been with us before, you know that my encouragement is that you would read one chapter of Scripture a day with me, and together we work our, our way book by book through the Bible. And so right now, we have been in, for a little while now, Exodus, the book of Exodus, and today we come to Exodus chapter 31. So, my invitation to you would be that when we're all done, you would take a few moments to read the whole of Exodus chapter 31. But for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to look at just a portion of that. We'll be looking at verses 12 through 17. So, if you have a Bible handy, or you want to pull it up on your phone app, I would invite you to join me in Exodus 31, beginning in verse 12. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, you must observe my Sabbaths. This will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come, so that you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. Observe the Sabbath, because it is holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it is to be put to death. Those who do any work on that day must be cut off from their people. For six years, days work is to be done but the seventh day is a day of sabbath rest holy to the lord whoever does any work on the sabbath day is to be put to death the israelites are to observe the sabbath celebrating it for the generations to come as a lasting covenant it will be a sign between me and the israelites forever for in six days the lord made the heavens and the earth and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. So, when you read chapter 31, you're going to notice that it has two very distinct sections. The first section talks about two craftsmen that God has called to do some of the skilled work of building the temple, the fine work, if you will. Now, I think this is really interesting. He literally names the two craftsmen who are going to do some of that intricate work. And I find it interesting because it reminds me that all gifts and abilities are important to God. In our churches today, we sometimes think that God only uses preachers or singers or teachers. But God has a place for every skill and every ability. And whatever gift he has given you, it is for a purpose. And it can be used for his kingdom work. Then, in the second half of the chapter, just as God is preparing to send Moses down off the mountain to bring the Ten Commandments to the people, he chooses to reinforce one of those ten. You'll notice that just before he dismisses Moses, he talked to him about the Sabbath. And what I noticed as I read this section, and perhaps you caught it too, is that God takes the Sabbath very Seriously. Now you understand what I mean by the Sabbath, right? Is that it is that one day of rest and worship that God ordained for the Jews. Now, we know he takes it seriously because it, first of all, is the only commandment that he chooses to speak about as he's sending Moses off. He doesn't talk about lying or stealing or cheating or anything like that. He doesn't talk about idolatry even or taking the Lord's name in vain. He talks about Sabbath as his sort of final word to Moses. But also notice, and you probably did notice, the strong language around it, right? Anyone who desecrates the Sabbath must be cut off 
from their people, shunned, if you will, separated from the community. And anyone who does work on the Sabbath must be put to death. That seems so harsh. Why is this so important to God? Well, first of all, He established the Sabbath as a commandment because we all need rest. God designed us. You know God created us, right? God designed us in such a way that we are not meant to work every day without rest. When we don't get rest, truthfully, bad things happen. Our bodies begin to break down. Our minds are not as sharp as they once were or could be. We start to have bad judgment or make bad decisions. But the Sabbath is also the day of worship. So he wants it for us because it is a day of rest and he wants it for him because it is a day of worship. So if we don't observe the Sabbath, we are forsaking that time with God, that opportunity to offer up to him our Worship. Worship matters. It is important to us because it is where we are spiritually renewed and it matters to God because it is our opportunity to express our love to Him. We live in a world that has greatly forgotten about the importance of Sabbath. But let us not forget that God established it for a purpose. It is for rest and for worship. And that is important to Him, and it's important to us. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, in this passage, God reminds Moses, who in turn reminded the people and reminds us that Sabbath matters. God, you use very strong language around the Sabbath. You speak of it as, as so important. Help us to see it that way. Help us to recognize that it does matter that we take the time to rest our bodies and our minds as you designed us to. And it does matter that we take the time to set aside just for worship to you, Lord. Help us to not neglect the Sabbath in the midst of our very busy lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.